Can you walk any softer? Oh, please, Jenna can't hear us. She's blind. I don't know if you can tell by the amount of like pretty little liar videos that people have been making, myself included. I think this is my fourth um, PLL video. But you know, that show had a lot of problems <laughs> and a lot of uh, plot holes, um, storylines that led to nowhere. And I'm here to talk about another plot hole, another storyline that it was just like it felt like they were going a certain direction, but then they forgot. We're gonna talk about Jenna today, Jenna Marshall. I was like somewhat done with my, you know, Pretty Little Liar related videos because a lot of people have been making many videos about Pretty Little Liars and I don't. I don't really like to talk about the same thing over and over again, especially if I feel like I don't, I'm not saying anything differently. But someone in one of my Pretty Little Liar videos commented that Jenna was one of the biggest plot holes in Pretty Little Liars. And I'm gonna have to agree. It took me a second to realize that they might be onto something. So I did my research and we have to talk. My name is Sophia. I forget to introduce myself in every single one of my videos. Hi, my name is Sophia. If you like this video, I hope you uh, consider to subscribe as well. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Pretty Little Liars, um, you'll suffer the consequence if you continue to watch this video. Jenna is a recurring character of Pretty Little Liars. She's Dobby's stepsister who she forces to be in an instance relationship where off to a great star. She can be very manipulative in flashbacks of her and Ice and she comes across as someone who can potentially rival her. She forces Toby to engage in a sexual relationship with her, blackmailing him to tell people he's forcing himself on her if he doesn't agree. She's supposed to be this mysterious character, which she was. There are many times where the show made us believe she could be A or working for A, but then we realize she is mysterious for no reason because she knows shit. Everything started when she moved uh, to town after her father married Dovi's mom. Uh, she was quite popular and Allison invited her to the group but she refused claiming that you know she chooses who she wants to be friends with or something like that. And the rivalry between these two shall begin. But I think there's room for one more. I really appreciate the offer. But I like to pick my own friends. After a failed prank by Allison and the girls, where they put a sticky bomb in Toby's garage, believing no one was home, turns out that Jenna was actually there and she became blind. She developed a crush against all of them, understandably so. And on top of that, Alison told everybody that it was actually Toby who did it, so Toby had to take like uh, responsibility for it. I think he even went to, um, what is it called? Like, youth center, I think. Her getting surgery and successfully being able to see again was a good storyline. It made us think how long has she been pretending. It even adds her back to the list of possible A suspects and she's more dangerous than before. And if done right, she could have been a great antagonist just as Mona. But just in your best PLL fashion, they ruin it by making her blind again due to something going wrong with the surgery. My problem is not her going blind again. It wasn't a worse storyline, but to make her lose her sight after a few episodes of finally being able to see, it was just awful and boring. In season two, she got a surgery in which it was believed to be unsuccessful until we see her kill a fly. Then in season three, the liar suspects she might be faking and Hannah and Arya follow her and confront her. All Jenna says is that pretended to be blind was the only protection that she had. But just a few episodes later, we see her holding hands with Shauna and tells her she might go blind again. And Shauna assures her that. 
On your darkest days, you know I'll be here for you. Ultimately, in a few episodes later, she goes blind again. I don't understand who she needed protection from since the next day after Hannah and Arya confront her, she's seen without the glasses. So, you know, she's done pretending to be blind. <laughs> like, she could have still pretended to be blind and if the liars attempted to tell anyone, she could have just blackmailed them. I mean, come clean about them um, being the reason why she's blind. Like, I just... It makes no sense. It's revealed later by Shauna that Jenna is afraid of Cece. So she might have been talking about her or Lyndon. They kind of dated until she dumped him and he confronts her about pretending to be blind and she tries to ignore him and leave, but he doesn't let her. She also tries to warn Emily about someone she's spending a lot of time with and I'm assuming she's talking about Lyndon since Emily and Lyndon were um, besties <laughs> in season 3 until, well, we all know what happened. <laughs> Jenna could have needed protection from either or both of them, but still, why did she stop pretending to be blind once the liars find out? Her being blind and not and then again is flawed, as if the writers went, oh my god, we're gonna shock everyone when they see that Jenna actually can see. What a plot twist! but they regretted it as soon as they realized they had to develop her character. It was pointless, like at least make her see, make her, you know, able to see for a few more episodes, for a whole season or two seasons, and then make her blind again. And plus, they could have made it even more interesting as if, you know, someone intentionally, you know, blinding her or attempted to to murder her like it could have been just more interesting than just oh yes her surgery went wrong you know which is i mean i guess it's realistic but we're talking about little liars nothing is realistic here in season two she's trapped inside i think it was just jason de la Renta's house and someone sets it on fire attempting to murder her like they could have done this in um later season like let's say season four season five and that res that being the reason why she became blind again it just it could have been so good and they just missed it just as when everything take a shot every time Pure Little Liars hints us about a character being sketchy, acting all are they a? Actually don't, because you will get drunk and will make a decision too. Jenna always seems to know more, to know something that the liars don't. Since she's blind, it's kind of improbable that she could be a, but she could still work for them and that's what we think until the show finally ends and we look like clowns. She does have a reason to not like the liars, I mean they literally blind her, but I think it's too extreme to think that she could have killed Alison. She does work for AD aka Alex in season 7 after she adopts her, but it was just for an episode, so does it really count? Besides, why did AD abduct her? Like, did we ever find out? Adding that to my never-ending list of questions PLL failed to resolve. Actually, I think we do have the answer for that, and I'm gonna mention later, so... It's still, there's a never-ending list of questions that Pretty Little Liar resolve. She seemed to be working on her own agenda, not with A, not with Mona, not, and definitely not with the liars. But what exactly is her agenda? Like, what's her end goal? I, I just... It's like she's bored and decides to go all full on. Yeah, I know who did that. And yeah, you should be careful of who you're hanging out with and keep your friends close but your enemy closer is when she... It's like she's just messing with the liars just for the sake of messing with them. Like, oh, let's give them a full-on mental breakdown, thinking that I actually have something to do with it. In season 7, Jenna and Noel attempted to kill the liars uh, with a gun, but Phil has Mary Drake intervene and killed Noel. Jenna claims that Charlotte left behind money for her surgery, and Noel was after the money and tried to kill Jenna and also murder Sarah. So... 
to my understanding, no wanted to kill Jenna for the money. But somehow they remained busy for many years. He's responsible for Showers Harvey's murder, which I think he did all of us a favor. I'm not gonna hold that against him. However, they attempted to kill the liars, which resulted in him dead and Jenna abducted by Alex due to their failure. So, Jenna and Noel were working for Alex, but Mary Drake wasn't since she killed Noel. And um, by the way, wasn't Jenna scared of Sissy and she left her money for a surgery? And why did they want to kill the liars? Was it because of Charlotte? And wasn't Noel rich? Didn't he have a lot of money? Why, why would he need Charlotte's money? Why would he want to kill Jenna for Charlotte's money when he has money on his own? It's been four years since the show ended and I'm just as confused as I was when I watched it the first time. So just like anything on Pretty Little Liars, Jenna is full of plot holes and is full of unresolved plots. No real motive behind anything that she was doing. What was her main goal? Destroy the liars' lives? Is she being blackmailed by A? We will never know. Like, we truly will never know. There was not a real reason or motive for her to be the sketchy person that she was. She had a very reason to not like the liars um, and hold a grudge against them than Mona, but Mona was mentally unstable and she wasn't just hurting the girls. She was just hurting everybody that like came, you know, on her way. And I don't know, it's just, Mona is different, I guess, but Jenna? <laughs> like, what did she know? What was she after? What did she want? The only real connection I see and possible cause of her being mysterious was being with Ali the night that she disappeared, thinking that she knew exactly what happened, like she knew who killed her and how. And in season three, when she drove Emily to the cemetery. Um. Why did she do that again? Was she bored and decided to be part of someone's plan to steal Ali's um, body parts and, you know, drug Emily and, you know, steal the things that the liars put in Ali's Coven told the liars to give the secret, you know, that she was the one who drove Emily to the cemetery and that she was, you know, able to see um, because she was still a target. To who? Cece? Lyndon? Alex? Why was Jenna afraid of Cece? Was that ever explained? Like, did she know Cece was Charlotte and that Charlotte was A? Or was she just afraid of Cece because, um, you know, Cece was the, mis you know, the new person and mysterious person in the show. So she was just afraid of her, like, was that? And <laughs> like, she's also best with Wilden and Melissa, the team of irrelevant people that Pretty Liar tried to make relevant. In season five, Signe and Jenna agree that they have to get rid of Alison. However, on the Christmas episode, um, Jenna tells Emily that she made the mistake of saying no to being friends with Allison once and that she was not gonna make that mistake again. So which one is the truth? They have to get rid of Allison or they wanna be friends with Allison because you're making me dizzy. Emily tells her that they think that Allison killed Mona and... <laughs> Where was I? Emily tells her that they think that Allison was the one who killed Mona and Jenna tells her that Signe and her think that too. I don't know how I was able to make this script because I'm reading it and like I'm so confused. <laughs> In season 7 she approaches the girls at the Raleigh Hotel lobby telling them that she knows what they're up to. Um, 
Sorry, how? And do you? She also claims to know Elliot. Um, how? Mind to explain? My issue, clearly, is that they never explain these things. Like, they never show any scenes that support these claims of, okay, how did Jenna know Elliot? Did we ever find out? I don't even remember what the liars were up to at that time, but how did Jenna know? Was she spying on them? Like, did she have, like, something on their phones? Like, just how? 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 And she can't even see, so how? Which enforces my point that Jenna was just a character to add mystery without actually adding mystery. All she did was acting as sketchy as if she knew something that you didn't if drop and then report to the grandmaster. She would say things as Oh, keep your friends close and I mean closer. Oh, you should be careful who you're hanging out with or you don't know anything. You know nothing just now. The worst thing that she ever did, to my understanding, it was in the season 3 finale where Melissa, Shauna and Jenna set a cabin on fire where the liars and I think Mona and Toby were there inside. It was after googling a little bit, I realized that Wilden was also involved into the whole thing in season three when the cabin and whatever he's the one who actually said um the lodge cabin whatever on fire and shauna was the one who helped trap the girls inside and melissa said that um she was suspicious of allison still being alive like everybody was working on different agendas i don't remember what agendas everybody had because i I can't keep up, but Melissa was suspicious about Alison being alive. So she was following the girls to find out if they were going to meet Alison. And um, Weldon was wanted to just, you know, burn them, kill them. And Shauna as well. And Jenna, I don't know where she fits in in this whole crazy story. What they were trying to do? Did they wanted to kill them? Like, what was the end goal? Was that just, you know, Jenna's revenge? Um, is this some kind of, like, parallel to what happened in the books? I actually read some of the Pretty Little Liar books. I think I read, like, five or seven. And then I stopped because there are too many. And they're... I wouldn't say they're dark. The books are better than the show. I might have to read the books again. But they scared me to death when I read them when I was uh, 14. So the thing in the book is that... Well, you all know, like, um, Alison actually had a twin who was named Courtney. And Courtney was a mentally unstable one. I mean, they were both mentally unstable, but, you know, Courtney was the crazy one, I guess. And they were gonna um, drive her to Radley. And Courtney was all, no, I don't want to go to Radley. So she pretended to be Allison, and Allison was the one who ended up in Radley. And actually, I think Courtney has done that before. So they, you know, they didn't exactly believe Allison when she was telling them that she was actually Allison. Anyway, flash forward, Alison escapes Radley, or I think she's actually let go. She uh, tries to kill Courtney. I think she actually does kill Courtney while everybody thought that she was Alison. And then, you know, the actual Alison was A, and she pretended she tried to kill, you know, the liars many times. And in one of the books, she actually sets, I, I don't remember if it was a cabin or a house, when the liar's inside, and I think she was also inside. I don't think she dies, but yeah, that happens. <laughs> so I think there was some kind of um, parallel to the book, but still, like, it, like, hey, 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 I'm not disputing and I'm not saying that, you know, the whole thing of setting the cabin on fire was crazy. All I'm saying is what was the point of them doing that? Like where they were just after Mona? Were they after Toby? Were they after the whole group? Were they after just the girls? Did she wanted to, was that her revenge? Like wanted to, you know, kill them or like at least suffer the way she suffered? Like what was the point? That's all I want. What was the point? That's why I can't take her seriously because 
it's like she's doing things and if she's even doing things because she's mostly just talk but if she does things i'm just like okay but why did you do that which is also why i don't like alex say or charlotte say because their reasoning to be a is so stupid it's like i woke up one day i was bored and decided to mess with people's life let's talk about her love interest for a second she went through different relationships throughout the show first it was toby her stepbrother with whom she forced into a sexual relationship with her that if he didn't agree she would tell people he was forcing himself on her my two favorite things incest and non-consexual abusive relationships that lasted until he finally stood up to her uh, with the help of Spencer. We then have Garrett, who she dated uh, while Allison was alive, or at least they were together when Allison died, disappeared. Throughout their time together, Jenna thought that he killed Allison, and they broke up when she returns the page of the missing page of the autopsy that Gabriel told her to hide. He went to jail and was eventually murdered. Not by Jenna. I think he was murdered by Mona, I think. She, she believed he killed Allison by a hockey stick because he told her. When in reality he just hit the tree. I'm guessing like he hit the autopsy because in the autopsy actually says the reason why Allison died. Well, Bethany. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But did Jenna knew exactly what the autopsy said? Because I, I mean, she knew she had the autopsy, the missing page of the autopsy. But I just, I don't remember why she returned it to the police. Like, I don't remember what was her end, like her point. Like, was she, oh, I don't need Garrett anymore and I'm just gonna destroy his life? Was that what she wanted to do? She later dated Noel, um, only to use him to gain her popularity back and they did it for quite a bit and then they were not seen together anymore. It was just a thing in season three and then bam, no more Jenna, no more Noel. Like they were seen, if they were even in the show, they were seen in, at two, in separate occasions, like never together. And then we see them in season seven, kind of not together, but like, in, like partners in crime I guess and then we finally have Shauna who we don't know if they dated or if they even had feelings for each other but come on I don't hold my friends hands and look them in the eye and tell them that even in the darkest day I always be there No, I I don't. <laughs> it is believed that Jenna is bisexual. However, there's a possibility that she was only using Shauna uh, for her own benefit, just like the rest of her partners. So it even feels a bit of queer baiting, um, since at no point is a dress or we get anything else besides that moment. But you know. Take it as you will. I didn't really research this, so I'm not really gonna touch the subject of queer baiting. Queer little liars have way too many problems that I'm just not. I don't feel like talking about queer baiting because I don't even know if it was queer baiting. It feels that way. It was like, oh, oh, there's something here. But then, like, it, like I know that Shauna probably had feelings for her, and I don't know if she ever addresses that, but I do know that Shauna felt a certain way towards Jenna, but Jenna, I don't know how she felt towards her. And that significant moment there, you know, f for the viewers, it kind of makes you, make you feel like, oh, oh, she's bisexual or pansexual or lesbian, whatever. She, she, oh, something's gonna happen here, but then nothing ever happens. So for me, it feels like queer baiting. If it doesn't feel like that for you, great. I don't know. I'm not gonna really touch the subject. I just felt to mention because that's how I felt. I also learned that Shauna was actually in love with Jenna. Was Jenna in love with her? That's the question. But Jenna was in fact in love with her. She said it in an episode. And here's the thing. So she was friends with Allison originally. And then she met Jenna and after hearing from Jenna how awful Allison was and Allison treated people 
Jenna specifically, she wanted to kill Alison, so she shot Ezra at the end of season four, and then in season five, when she's going to kill Alison, Arya kills her instead. <laughs> Did that make sense to any of you? Because it does not make sense to me, but uh, the things that we do for love. We're done with the video because talking about Pretty Little Liar makes me mad. <laughs> because this was my favorite show when I was growing up. And at the time, I didn't really have problems with the show. Like, the only problems I had were Arya and Ezra. Although at the time, I didn't know why I thought that was a problem. And my other problem was, you know, they would always be like, Oh, is this person A? Is this person A? And then making... And then the actual A being someone that had no reason to be A. <laughs> so that was my only problem with the show when I was growing up. But I still watch them every day. I still tune in every fucking Tuesday. Revisiting the show, it kind of opens your eyes to how much the shit that was there did not make sense and how actually problematic it was. I'm gonna leave the video right here. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know how you feel about Jenna. Did you actually, I liked Jenna actually. And I feel like she could have been a great, you know, character like Mona. I've also realized that Mona is not that great of an antagonist as I thought when I was growing up. But I don't really want to make a video about Mona because she's like the only character that I like from Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna skip that video. But um, let me know down below what you thought of her. And and what do you think would have been a great um, story for her? Jenna being A, I feel like it's too extreme and too, uh, you know, like, oh yeah, you know, she was blind and now she wants to destroy their life. Like, I don't think it's reason enough for her to be A. Um, I mean, Mona being bullied is also not reason enough for her to be A, but whatever. <laughs> she was crazy, so I guess it makes sense for me. Um, I don't know, but Jenna being A doesn't really exactly make sense and it's not like, it's not the route that I want for her or that I would have loved for her. I just wish that, you know, there was a reason for her to be, you know, that mysterious, just like Melissa. Like I wish Melissa and Jenna would have had a bigger reason than just, you know, being friends with, I guess, the wrong people or just knowing that Alison wasn't the innocent little girl that the liars thought she was. What was the actual point? Did they want to kill the liars? Did they really hate, did Melissa really hate her own sister that much to destroy her life? When the liars found out about something, like about something about A, something about Alison, like Jenna would always be like, well, yeah, she's, she's not the person you think you thought she was. Let me know down below what you guys think. And I'll see you guys in my next video. If you want another video about Brilliant Little Liars, let me know what you want me to talk about and I'll see if I'll do it. I probably will because as much as I say, I don't like making videos about Brilliant Little Liars because it makes me mad and it breaks my 14 year old heart. Um, I still like to talk about Brilliant Little Liars because it's like revisiting my teen girl days. So yeah, let me know down below. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!